And I just poured, I don't know, about a couple of cups of it into that um, keg. Yeah, Cam's filming it. Okay, so yeah, anyway, I poured some star sand into the keg. It's in the bottom there. I'm just going to roll it around in the keg for a little while. And I'm just going to kind of slowly keep tipping it farther and farther forward until it starts coming out the end. Because I want to get the entire inside of the keg coated. And I want it to pour out through our in and out spouts. So you'll rotate it all the way and through the whole keg and then pour a little out yep. this way and a little out that way. Yep. And I just and I want to pour it out through and I'll spray that also, but it's good to have um, everything coated really well. Can't can't not coat enough. So we're getting a little see I just got a little um, out of that one hole. So I'm starting to get it as I roll it a little farther forward. And what are you coating it with again? Star sand. Star sand? Star sand? Yeah, you might be calling it your caustic. Just that. Yeah, you're calling it the caustic. This so just, then, right, doesn't okay. it look like this more or less? Then I'll it's roll it up so I get it on the lip. Star these? sand? We do not have. You don't have any of this? <clears throat> I don't believe ours is like that. So is now it's going to come out. I've never um, seen a container like that. My, maybe. I don't know. I got to check. I don't think so. Because well, we might, had to wash everything. Yeah, so. you might have got... So then uh, towards the end, I just Kinda keep turning like it so that it pours out over the lip, over the entire lip area. And get a... So in other words, you just want the inside completely coated. You want it to pour out mm -hmm. through the in and out holes. You want this lip area completely coated very well. And then what I do at the end is after I've done that, I also take a spray bottle and spray it inside. Make sure the lip gets covered. Good. And this is just sort of insurance. Make sure it all, when I pour it out the lip, it came out the lip. And then I pour spray it on the outside of the lip. I'm happy that you guys got something like this. That's we like, might have probably. Yeah, this is what came with and the I spray the in and right, out. Right, that's so what it's we've the got. the same thing because it's a no rinse cleaner. The same. It's a no, no rinse, rinse cleaner? Yeah. So, so everything that he's already did with this is a no rinse. That's right. right. So you coat it on the Turn inside, and then it... you put a little out of each hole, then he got then needs to some dry. of that cleaner in here. Mm -hmm. and he... Spin it, it'll hold it open. So while it's open, spray inside the valve because you're going to have gases coming in and out through that and then I leave that I leave that open so that it'll dry well so you want to go through pain take painstaking cleaning rituals on your cakes for sure mm -hmm. as well as it's got to be as, already brewed in right it's got to be as clean <clears throat> as your it's fermenter and everything else um, we can and then the inside of this tube. Well, we're gonna give it. Do you guys have yours in uh, mm, thing with it, the? It's not like that. It's uh, I think. That it, it just the, it just the lid. Just okay. So you guys will have to siphon it. Yeah, we did siphon. Okay. So we did. We had that. Oh, like okay. you put it in, you get it going, and it gets yeah, going so through the hole. Yeah, you just have to do the same thing, except right and. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, make sure everything. We wanted to take one. on our pans and stuff, mm -hmm. our our big pots. Adam's already talking. Let's just drill a hole and put a thing in there, and, and do it that way. And I'm saying, yeah. And you know why we didn't get one that has that? Because you guys have one like this. You're gonna call it, a, you know, they're gonna call it a bottling bucket. It's the same bloody thing. We just have it. one like this, mm -hmm. plastic like this, you know. But ours, you can't see through. But it's got all this stuff on it. Mm -hmm. Which I sure wish we could see through it so we could see this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but ours ours isn't see-through. And uh, ours, I don't believe, had this. No, it just a lid. Yeah, so we got the wrong bucket. Yeah, but didn't it come with two? Mm. We, we got one of these. One of these. We have one. So they have one that they frequently call a bottling bucket, but it's got the spout on it. So this might technically Here be... 
we pull had this, a hose. Can I pull this rug over underneath this guy? There we go. Because this stuff is right of our total. Yeah, better. So yeah, I don't think ours ours had any anyone we had had this or our 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 our. So then when you guys can make your next one in a few weeks, have to get your stuff all freed up. Yeah, as soon as that's free, we're gonna yeah. go over the next one. Oh. It's really not hard. It's time consuming. It is time consuming. It's time consuming. That's right. Yeah, and and I is that's where it was. I was cooking and uh, brewing the beer and stuff with them at the same time. Yeah, I mean it's not so bad if you have something else to do. And, you know, if it's kind of summer, you're outside. Make it out. make it event. Yeah. We had a blast actually because. Uh, we had uh, elk biscuits and gravy. Oh yeah. Oh, good. it was so good. Yeah, I, I, we fed a lot of people with that. Even the boss come over the next day and had some, and he says, "Oh my God, that's amazing." And it so was. So was you, you and Cole and Adam. And Adam, up? yeah. And we we took turns stirring, and, and we were just going through the routine. I mean, I thought it was a, like a lot more complicated, mm -hmm. based on the chemistry behind the sides. It's really not. Yeah. So did you, what you kind of uh, so did you guys have? Did you guys do the um, batch sparging or continuous? What did you guys do? Batch sparging. Okay. Yeah, we put the, all the all the uh, malt mm -hmm. in uh, at one time. But we added the water in layers, you know, like we, I think we cooked a gallon or, or, or somewhere right around there, put it in the, the tune mm -hmm. and left it heat up. Then when we were done, we added the, the ingredients. Then we started adding the hot water as we boiled it. Okay. And we ended up coming out with um, four point I think it was 4.87 out of five gallons. Okay. It was pretty close to the five, yeah. Okay. And we could have pulled out more, but they didn't want to. They were like worried about the bottom being in there a little oh, bit. Yeah. I'm saying, no, you just, it was basically so losing you, patience. Um, you guys checked your uh, gravity then? Yes. And we didn't do it in the first one. We all kind of forgot on that. But after we checked it on that, it was like, oh. 1.54. Yeah. Okay. It was like it was like right close to what it said close on there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's good. It was right close, and I'm I may be off on the numbers. I'd need the sheet. Right. Yeah. But yeah. when we did it, we had to add more beer to our uh, oh, where you put right. the and spin it because mm -hmm. I did all that and we added it up, but we didn't have enough. Oh. Okay. So we thought it was under, so we added more beer to it. Mm -hmm. Then we went up and spun it again, and it came right on up. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so it was, we were lacking a little bit of beer in the, in the tube. I can't remember what the technical name of it was. Yeah, well, I don't know, I'm talking about just the thing that holds it. And then I got suckered in at the end mm -hmm. to go ahead and taste it without any, uh, you yeah. know, anything that's in it. Yeah, but that's what you should it's gonna be a, It's going to be a pretty hoppy beer. Oh, okay. And we added three different kinds of hops. Okay. In in like the first one we added, and we stirred it for forever. Right. And then we added one in 15 minutes, and then one in five minutes. What are you doing? Do you want me to? I started. Okay. Um. So. Uh, do you want me to do that? Yeah. Oh, fine. Um. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it went, it went. we just followed the, what you taught us. You know, there was nothing complicated, and the recipe pretty much tells you everything you need to do. And Cam sent us the, the figures. That's why I sent you the message, right about the should yeast. we pitch more yeast? Because I, 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 we didn't need to pitch our packet. Mm -hmm. My friend, who's, who's, he competes all over, oh. he was sending me the liquid yeast to throw in it. Oh. And he would have sent us enough. He would have probably oh, okay. sent us whatever was equivalent to 2.9 packs. Yeah. But then we, as me and Adam and, and Cole started talking about the recipe, they knew we were making five gallons because mm -hmm. the recipe calls for it. Right. So why would they, if they sent us the whole kit, only send us one pack if it wasn't enough? 
Well, it generally is enough. Do you know what I'm saying? There's just people, like anything, I guess, who will argue over whether they think it's enough. Right. That's people all we've will, ever used. I mean, that's all we've ever used, but people will say that, again, it's the difference between having better beer. So, so would a U of guys have, have added extra yeast? Or we just, haven't in the past, but we might start. Yeah, we might actually. And what is it now? When we you add that extra yeast, what's that going to do? Make it stronger, or just uh, pull more beer out, or make extra like like at the end of the keg? You know that you're well, talking about the reuse, right. or it's like if you push <clears throat> too much or too little, oh. you'll end up having, you know, things like the diacetyls stuff that tastes. Um, makes stuff taste kind of buttery. Or if there's too little? Right, so basically you need to have enough yeast to clean things up. So oh. in the secondary, because if you don't have enough, then basically when you go to secondary, there might not be anything really left to clean things up. Oh, because when gotcha. you're going to secondary, you're actually getting rid of some of the yeast byproducts, and the yeast will start. Excuse me, boss, you have I hear you. If you over pitch, then you can start having a bunch of yeast dying on you because there's not a food form, and then they'll start creating bad Well, so it's better to have enough, if not more, than enough, uh, enough yeast. Yeah. But you guys haven't had no problem with the buttery taste, have you? No, we haven't, but I don't know. I mean, I think We're our beers pretty, could be better. We're pretty good about leaving it in our secondary. For quite a while, but sometimes we get flavors that we're like, well, that's a little right. weird. This, you know what I mean, it's this not like it's so here. offensive you can't drink beer, but it's like, well, you know. This one here finishes to me a little bit almost it has a stale hop finish to me. Something. I can't I, I wouldn't know the difference, you know what I mean? So I have nothing to go on. Um I mean, to me, that's a good drinkable beer. It's super smooth, goes down easy. It's a nice drinkable beer. It's just it's right there at the end when it finishes. There's, it's not really an off flavor, I don't think. It's just a, it takes more hoppy to be. Yeah, it's definitely part of the hops. You know, and if we used the hops that oh, we had yeah. in the freezer for quite a while. Right. So it might have had a little freezer burn, or might have been got oxygen on it and oxidated a little bit. I don't know, but. Um, yeah, it's no, I mean it's 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 good beer. It's just it's one of those things that yeah, that's the you know thing you got to figure out when you're brewing is you guys. I mean, we kind of try to be frugal all the time. But I think we're gonna stop doing that. But I mean, if trying you don't, to be stop being what frugal. So oh, frugal. So if you don't, oh yeah, frugal you know, withholding. If you don't use your hops, you know, if they send you a packet and you don't use all that, just, unless you're gonna make a beer with it, like in the next week or two, just scrap it. Yeah. It's like it's not worth messing. They're not two, three not bucks for a packet of hops, right? It's not worth messing. So you know we it's keep we beer. keep all of our hops and we keep them frozen. We use them, you know, like this one I think was a year old that I put in it. Yeah. But it's so. frozen, so it's good. Yeah. But then you find out, well, maybe it's you know, they could fresh have hops would have made it not taste how you wanted it. Yeah. Or even just simple matter of um, it'd be better. Fresh, better. You know, it's like fresh ingredients. Well, I kind of think it's pretty but, good. So anyway, what I did, I don't know, I just, maybe I, I didn't show you that, but I just took the, I give it a very violent <laughs> shake. He's going to go violent shake oh, it. The going to fall on his face, and I'm going to watch. Because again, you don't want any wet star sand mm. in your beer. If you can help. Him? Yeah. Or him? No. Did you spray it? It's like, I'm pretty sure. Are you filming it? Yeah. So when I spray it, I, gotta get it all. I keep spraying it in there. Right. That's, that's why, why I asked you. Sure I give it a good spray. Yeah. Well, I'm just 
Oh. Talking to the He's, camera? Yeah. Yeah, we need that, that, that video. That's why I'm saying when Cam misses something. So don't worry about getting too talking. much in there. Uh, I'm not missing. Let it run out the other end, then I flop it over to the other side and I spray the other side and I let it run out the other don't side. Don't be scratching. What are you doing? And then I go give it the shake I just showed you. <laughs> All right, now follow him up, Cam. I think yep. he's already got out of there. I think he's got that. <laughs> Did you learn? Just remember, don't pause it. Just keep it recording yeah. until it's time to pause. So he's putting the cake back together. Yep. All right, so we're putting the out tube back in the out slot. And it's already been cut short by an inch and a quarter. Ish. Ish. Very technical measurement. Right? That is funny too, man, because it was about an inch and a quarter with it out even doing anything. It's pretty basic. All right, gas tube. That would be the in. Put gas in. I'm gonna double check here. In is the pretty small one. I always double check with another. What was the mason here. jar? Yeah, I'm going to transfer the bottom stuff in there. you got to get them in the picture too, Cam. I am, but I'm getting the mason jar all the time. That is a neat looking mason jar. Oh, you saving your yeast. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got to get video now, of that. Now, what beer is this that you're kegging? The one we made last, which is like a brown rock. Oh, the one we uh, we made out there? Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. It's been a week since we've been here yeah, last time. been a week since we've been here yeah no i i just this is fantastic because we'll be able to show the class the whole process hey uh will you need all this when you do it um yes you don't, you, no, you don't need you don't it to you don't have it. to use the co2 oh, i'm well. gonna hook, i'm gonna hook some c up co2 up to this tank and flush the oxygen out of it but you don't have to do that. You oh. can just put the... Just make sure you're Why I ask this, because uh, we don't have this part, but we just have the two. So... Which part are you talking about, Cam? So this part that they're attaching right now? You guys don't have it. We don't have it. Right, because he's doing an oxygen flush, like, or a CO2 flush. You have a kegerator? Yes. Yeah. So this would be... You will have one of these in your kegerator. And you can actually, if you want to flush it, take the whole bottle and this attachment out of your kegerator and just hook it up to this just to do an oxygen flush. Okay, mm. we'll go It's ahead. actually easier than whatever. I, I think I now. did see that piece. I think we do have it. Okay, we're going to just have to find it. <clears throat> we'll go, but I think we only have one, uh, one bottle. But the, you do the CO2 the same as the, the oxygen. Same as the, yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to flush this keg right now with um, CO2 okay. to get the oxygen out. And this is your release valve, pressure release valve. So whenever a keg gets too much pressure in it, it can automatically blow. But you can also do it manually. So I'm going to leave that open so that it pushes the oxygen out of the top. Because the CO2 is heavier um, and it will come up from the bottom. And push out through the top. Now that's what you 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 Actually, put the oxygen in your beer with, correct? Correct. And actually, what I do to do that, I'm catching in here messing up. I actually put the the uh, in tube in the out tube in the out tube so that the CO two goes clear to the bottom of the keg. So you, you're you just reversing it flush. to do the oxygen flush. Exactly. And, you'll pull it back. and then I'll swap it back so that it fits the valve. Right, and you swap it back when you start putting the beer in. Or when you yeah. put the beer in, then you shoot it with right the after oxygen. This, I'll swap it back. And there's no reason to get too worked up about getting it too tight because we're, uh, we're just flushing. So I'll turn this on. What kind of pressure do you put on that full open? 
uh, I open the the valve coming out of the tank full open and it, this is actually an all, all old oxygen setup so it's not really a CO2 setup and then I just crack this a little bit you don't have to get too crazy because you don't want to stir up the oxygen and like mix it with the CO2 and all of that make a little tornado in there just turn a little bit on give it about 30 seconds I usually count to 30, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003 sort of thing until uh, and let it push that CO2 out. So you're on the out tube, the outside, and then you're going to take that and put it back on the inside. Yep. And you've already got your springs and everything in it. And they'll be able to tell the difference between the two. So he just keeps that kind of... Oh. And again, that's an oxygen. Gauge. But it works, it's so right. yeah, you know so how to work it. So just turn it on a little bit and let it flush out for a little bit and get the oxygen out. And uh, I mean, it's not a hundred percent, but it's way better than if you didn't do it. So what is the but point of, of doing it? A again? lot of people don't even do it. You want to get the oxygen out of your beer so that um, it's not going stale on you it'll start to go stale on you a lot faster with oxygen in it. So the CO2 pushes out the, the oxygen. chemistry professor can actually answer that oxygen. Let's hear it. Chem yeah. profess. Well, I think we just did. <laughs> you just said it? Yeah. Well, it'll, it'll just go stale, stale on you a lot quicker if you have, um, if you have oxygen in your beer. Right. You don't want to oxidize the trace. So, how, uh, so the oxygen is now presumably pushed out, correct? Yeah, more or less. Yes. So, how did it escape? Which one? Because he left this hole open, and then that's also open. The pressure the release, release valve, valve is, also is also open, which you also need to leave open. Otherwise, you can build a lot of pressure in there. Right. Well, when you transfer your beer, mm -hmm. it will not go in if you don't have Wait, the it. pressure release valve open because the, the CO2 that's in there, the air that's in there, whatever mixture it is, um, needs to escape or it won't allow the beer to flow in. Oh. So you want to leave that open until you're completely finished transferring the beer. You know what I was expecting? I was expecting to hear and I didn't hear nothing, so Ready for it? Yeah. that's why you did it really low. What's that? Yeah, you can put the other no. side on you. No. So um we've discovered through trial and error that if you put yeah, yeah. this you on which went on? If you push the, the out valve on that all of this little mechanism in there because you've got a lot of you've got hops and yeast and traub you know in your keg it can flow in there and um basically just clog that all up so i have a larger tube that i put over the entire uh inlet here without that on it and then i Tighten it down. Oh, so you pump the beer in first without that on. Yeah. And then you put the see it put that back on, but you have the out already on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you guys make this yourself? <clears throat> yeah, you can buy these little connections though, like clamps and hoses yeah, and yeah. stuff that'll fit over what you need. Better than the local hardware store. Okay. Yeah. So. Wait, Jim, make sure you get a good picture of that. Do you want to tie this on? Yeah, I got a good picture. This I'm is filming it. Be super we go, tight. We have to go to the hardware store and do this. Well, we can't really do it, can we? Because we Wait, don't yeah, have a uh, one have to with a. Your next fermenter. I mean, when you go get a different fermenter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get. Now you guys are just, like, just siphoning it to the bottom. Just siphon it out how we siphoned it in the yeah. first place? Yeah, just make sure it's going in the bottom, right? So you're not. You don't want mixing. Of your beer going in here, right? Same reason you want to oxygenate it. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you have a tubing that goes that sits on the bottom. It's okay. Been sterilized like we did. If you get one of these tubings again, like an ace or whatever, just right. I mean, you probably already have a hose attached to your siphon, right? Okay. 
Yeah, no, we we can take it all apart because I washed everything. Yeah. So I mean, just make sure everything has that sanitizer sprayed in it. And you let it dry. I just remembered something. You remember when I was talking to you earlier and I couldn't remember what I was going to ask? Mm -hmm. Here's what the deal was. Oh, my God. I'm pulling it away again. Give me just a sec. Um, what if our water didn't have enough calcium and, and the minerals? Because you remember when we mm -hmm. tested our water? Mm -hmm. We were low in calcium. We were low in everything. Mm -hmm. Would that affect how the yeast is reacting or the beer is reacting? Nothing? It won't affect the yeast. It's going to affect your... Can affect your pH, but I mean, did you guys check your pH? I mean, it won't affect the p. It won't affect the yeast unless your pH was. I don't think it's. It's not gonna affect your yeast. You'd have to be. So our pH could it? We we needed to check our pH, didn't we? Yeah, but when you go to transfer it, just check it. Oh. Uh. I, oh, check it when we go to transfer it. Yeah, so do so we have the tools is. to check it, or? I can give you a pH pro. Cool. And you te I'm test the beer. I'm going to pull the fermenter out. Okay. Or the bubbler out. It's been of the fermenter. Yeah. It's been wedged in here nicely. Now this is something that I just do. Not many people really do it, but. And you, and you won't leave this. You know, won't be because be you don't have a anyway. right. You don't have a CO two spare CO two container. Oh, but you're going to use just to push keep it the through more oxygen out. I feed a little CO two in through the bubbler hole. Okay. If I can get oh, this that's turned awesome. on, and that pushes the beer out. Well, it doesn't just push it out, but it keeps it from. It pushes it out, but more importantly. It keeps the uh, oxygen from getting sucked into it. So less about pushing it out than just getting oxygen exposed to your beer. So what if uh, you instead of using the CO2, you just kept your finger or hand or something over the whole, that rubber stopper to plug it? And in order for it to... Right, it'll have, create a vacuum and it'll stop flowing. Oh, so you got to be able to have, to have a, okay. something going in there. My bad. And I knew that too. You know, nobody does this. You, you know. Yeah. Plus, you guys. It's like not that big a deal. So, you're probably going to drink it fast enough. It's not going to go sour. Yeah, I'm absolutely certain that between him and the other two, it will go dead quick. Oh well, I was actually calculating on because my grandma was asking. But uh, if we drink a beer every hour from five to uh, <laughs> five to two, be nine uh, nine total beers, and uh, for every uh, for a five gallon, there's eight pints. So we could do that. <laughs> for every gallon, there's they eight be, pints. They can no, be done in a day. It will be. So there are forty ga uh, forty pints in a five gallon. Yep, so you guys can. So four guys, or even if we had a party and have people bring their own beers and have them us them try our own beer, yeah, we could get easily get rid of it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it'd be a problem. No, uh, providing it doesn't taste like butter, pure <laughs> hop, <clears throat> or f what do the what do them call phenol or what's the bad stuff called? Um. Yeah. The Phenols, you mean? Phenols, yeah. yeah. You don't have, um, yeah, there's a fusel alcohols. Fusel alcohols, yeah. In which yeah. case, then you're just drinking a hard alcohol, or then you're just like drinking moonshine. Oh, you should have never put that on video. <laughs> Adam and Cam and them will be deliberately sabotaging the batches. That is hilarious. Well, I don't know. Jim drank fusel alcohols, probably worse than. Everclairers, moonshine, you've drank both. Yeah, 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 there's some good moonshines, but not very many. <laughs> oh, I loved more. orange peel moonshine. Five shots, wiped, laid out on the floor right next to the toilet. When I opened up my eyes, two were in the tub, one was on the other side of the floor, and one was head was in the toilet. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was called orange peel moonshine. Yeah, mercy. One of my old friends, uh, Ernie Patrice's family, his uh, dad and uncle made it. Holy crap. Five shots wiped. 
I was in ninth grade, but <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty uh, funny. Was funny. Yeah, we we uh, it was crazy because we used to knock it dead. You know, I mean, you kind of ruled the roost if you could knock down two bottles of Mad Dog Twenty Twenty on your own. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> And that was back then. I could handle a hangover for a day and a half, two days. <laughs> now I'm like a hangover last two weeks. This is kind of awesome because we were thinking that the transfer pro process would be really complicated, you know? Yeah, no, not really. Especially it's... if you have a fermentation bucket with this big at the... When I was kind of thinking was that... When Just you guys would time. do this, mm -hmm. guess what? you go have the... So there's going to be a lot of leftover down here? Yeah. There's actually not a lot in the bottom of this one. This no. is a fairly low trout. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? We'll find out. Well, I don't think this is a... Like a real high alcohol content beer. In other words, I don't think it had a lot of grains in it, which trans means there was not a lot of sugars in it. So... Um, the less grain and sugars that you have, the less trout you're going to have. Oh. It's kind of a yeast waste bed. There's a lot of dead yeast in there and just things that um, settle to the bottom from the fermenting process. The hops. Exactly. There. There's a bunch of hops in there. So what about this rim right, uh, ring right here? Is that all garbage? That's the Krausen, and that's that's good stuff. You want to save the Krausen? This ring? Yeah. No, you just wash that out. Yeah, oh. I mean you could, you could. If, I mean, if you want to get healthy yeast, you grab it off of that. Off the top? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you got it off the trowel. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's it's, it's better, better up, up here. there. But oh, you nice. run the risk of uh, infecting your entire beer when you go to collect it. Most people don't, and even you know, not, you know, like the breweries up there, right? They were pulling it off the bottom, but your better yeast is you take it off the. But again. But do you have to do that prior to emptying yeah. it because it's already dead now, right? Yeah, basically, you know, when it's uh, when you get a lot of activity and it first starts to develop. That's kind of when you want to take it off. Oh, so that's why you're talking. You runs the risk of. Okay, I get that. Then so, you want to do that right away. Yeah, so you, you're opening the lid to take stuff off, and then, you know, you might get some shit. It's kind of, is it really likely you would? If you alcoholed your arms and had something on your head? I mean, what really yeah, could just, get into it? I mean, as long as your environment doesn't have, you know, you don't have a lot of air circulation. Because you mm. have air circulating. Basement. Gonna get in, you know, I mean, just oh, like if you have animals and stuff, a lot of floating microbes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she got cat hair floating around. Probably not a good idea. You know, we had to wash our fermentum bucket a couple times because the cat, the neighbor's cat Snickers, mm -hmm. coming around for food, rub it up, and then we look over and he's in our trying to get in our bucket. <laughs> and I'm like, there's nothing in there, you know. Yeah, Snickers is bad news. And it's down to the wire. Look at all that left over down there. Actually, on the question for the yeast, mm -hmm. I kind of uh, saw this with the Guinness video mm -hmm. that before they even uh, do the beer, mm -hmm. they take the hibernation, uh, the hibernated be uh, yeast, mm -hmm. and then they reactivate it and they test it, and then they put in their beers. Ears. The for the what's that called? Secondary. Um, probably just no. It's primary. Yeah, just doing it right off the bat instead of you know. The but they just beast. go literally make their activate their own yeast mm -hmm. before they even put in the beer. They just take a little bit of the batch and then they mm -hmm. put the yeast in and activate it, and then they put everything in. Mm -hmm. So when you took that off, is there any risk of losing anything right out of there, or is it? It's it's still got something escaping, right? Out of here? No, out of this one. Oh, yeah, you know. <coughs> there shouldn't be anything escaping out of it. So, did... Except any air that was possibly in it before, which should be... Because we 
flushed it with CO2, it should be predominantly CO2 that could possibly escape. Oh, okay. Well, that's all right then. Yeah. So then I also closed the pressure release valve at this point. You close out after you put we're filling it, right? Because mm -hmm. you want to have a little it's, bit of flow. It yeah. allows it to right. flow in. And as soon as as soon as I'm done transferring it to the keg, I turn that pressure relief valve on to per, uh, put both the valves on tight, make sure they're nice and tight. And now you just put a label on it so you know what it is. So, so you don't confuse it with your other righteous beers. Yeah, we're probably more than likely unless Cam and Adam really get caught up in this process. Me? It's one for a while. <laughs> yeah, him. So here's the tag. Here's the string that goes on the tag. So how long do we leave it set in the keg? Um, depends on how healthy your beer is. It, it kind of depends on the beer that you're, the kind of, it definitely depends on the beer that you're brewing. If you have an IPA, you probably a couple weeks or no more. Mm. Or else the hot flame is going to overwhelm. Oh, well. Oh, well. So you want to, like on this one particular kind in uh, here. Mm -hmm. If it's a Hefeweizen, you probably want that on the tap in two days. This one? Almost. Don't get cat hair in there. I'm I'm just kind of looking to see the waste of the. That's not waste. That's all good. Right, Karen. I'm talking yeah, about right. with the yeast. Most ales are ready to put on the tap. Mm-hmm. In a month. Yeah, so that's all kind of yeast. Um, okay, it's just all the. Those are some loggers. Well, I'm talking yeast. more like my observation. Oh, so what about this one? Depends on the type of beer. This is an ale, I believe. Is this what you guys made? It was an ale. Uh, we made a uh, IPA. An IPA, so probably want to be drinking this one in the next couple of weeks. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go so you just the leave way. it in the keg, and then yeah. when do you hit it with that? With CO2, CO2, yeah. When you're ready uh, to drink it? About 48 hours, 48 to 72 hours before you drink it. Oh, okay. okay. So once we put it in the keg, we just wait for about 40, so about... No, you want to set it in that keg for the secondary process. That's an IPA, so you want to give that about two weeks. Okay. And then put it on CO2 for 48 to 72 hours. Okay. And then it's and ready to drink. And then we'll give it time to force carbonate. Yep. So when you, when, when you put it on the four, 48 to 72 hours, is that when you're refrigerating it as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's yep. when you put it on the CO2? Yep. Okay, yep. I got you. And I'll show you. So what's the name of this beer? Do we have a name? Yeah, it's something brown rye. My paperwork's out there somewhere. So can you use anything to scrape that off the bottom? Yeah, you're supposed to put water in here to... You know what I mean? So do you need but the water running? No, I mean, but it should be boiled probably. Oh, mm. so you only take off what you can dump now. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of coming off, so if I can... Yeah, it's a brown rye. Like. So we'll just call it a brown rye. And this, I, I didn't get to see the original recipe, so is it like, uh, is it more grainy, or what is it? Can you get the sheets that aren't there? Yeah, just sit here. Just, I mean, uh, I, just from my own knowledge, because I never seen what the original recipe um, was. It was mostly a pale, uh, two-row malt, pale malt. Oh, okay. Like oh, it okay. It had some rye in it and a little bit of darker malt in it. Oh, all right. But mostly it was actually a... Right, two real pale malt was the bulk of it. Is this going to be more of a hoppy beer well, or not very hoppy? Not very hoppy. More malty. We had, yeah, we had one 60 minute hop edition, which is where it's going to be. You know, I mean, that's where we're going to get the hop, hoppier flavor. And then we had one towards care? the end, which would be more All right. flavor. Yeah, I'll just take a look at what we're doing here while she's mixing that up. Take a picture. No. I got Last longer. Video. I have to tell you guys though that um, unfortunately that yeast we tried to propagate out of that beer I drank. Uh huh. It didn't do anything. Hmm. I think it's because it was uh, the alcohol in the beer was too high. Oh. Uh, which one was that? Remember in class I brought the I had a bottle um, conditioned sour beer. Oh, that one that stuff we just did. Yeah, and then nothing wrong. Oh, so we had a bogus session.
That's right. I so. Think it's because- I think it's because the alcohol percent was like eight something. Oh, and the higher the percent, the less yeast you're going to have left over. Yeah, and you're probably at some point it's just going to... I mean, that beer was sitting around here for quite a while before you drank it. Maybe if you have it pretty fresh. But it was sitting on 8% alcohol beer for a long time. And uh, yeah, the alcohol probably killed the rest of the yeast. So we have to redo that? Yeah, we'll have to redo that. So this... This is an ale, so you probably want it set for about a month okay. before you actually put it on the keg. And then you want to put it on the gas about 48 to 70, the CO2, about 72 to 48 hours before you're ready to drink it. But you don't have to put it, the out tube on, just put the gas on the in tube. And as many times as you, maybe not as many times, but a few times each day, a time or two, just grab the, sh the keg and pull it out and just shake it. Lift it up, shake it. Give it, you set it on the floor, give it a good long shake, a couple of minutes, and that'll get the CO2 into the beer, and that'll carb it up for you a lot quicker. Mmm, all right. So that's why you can carb, force carb one in about 48 hours to 72 hours, is by giving it that shake and kind of force it in there. Okay, so you shake it during the carbonation. Yeah. All right. Exactly, yeah. Gotcha. And there's our next yeast testing. That's right, we're going to be... Uh... We're going to rinse this next week. Uh, and then we rinse it how? Um, you put it in um, jars with more water and then you shake it and it'll eventually separate out. So you've got the good yeast on top and the garbage on the bottom. Oh, well that was, I see I don't recall or remember that, but that's how you talk. get the good, oh we didn't yeah, we talk about talk, it? We haven't talked about it yet because I want to have this so that we can do it. So huh. it next week. I'll be able to say to the other students, guess what I know and you don't. Uh-huh. <laughs> They'll figure out quicker than you. Shut your mouth. I already witnessed. <laughs> All right, so we're done with this process. Yep, we're done. All right. There she is, Karen and her husband, Jim. Professor and Jim. And Jim. <laughs>